hello hi friends hi family welcome again to another session of faith boosters god has been amazing and today we start off with absolute thanksgiving thanksgiving to god for his goodness for his grace welcome to my home <laughs> welcome to my home today for the next four weeks we will host you here at our home in this special season of our lives welcome 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 he has done us well and i want us to start with just that just stopping to say thank you jesus you have done me well you have done me well in our language just stop and think about the goodness of god and what he has done in your life can you take a moment today i don't know whatever is going on maybe it's some good thing bad thing but god has been faithful i love this song it just always makes me really emotional when i think about the goodness of god towards me that is undeserved and yet he continues to pour it upon me you have done me well 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 jesus and you have done to my swahili brothers and sisters i think that touches your heart in a special way in your language you have done me well jesus father we thank you why don't you go ahead and open your mouth and just say thank you to god for his goodness lord thank you thank you for the opportunity to preach the gospel Thank you for the opportunity to impact lives, oh God. Thank you for a life of true meaning. Thank you, Lord, for health. Thank you for children. Thank you for family. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice that makes us sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord. You have done us well. In the good times and in the bad times, we recognize that you have done us well, Lord. You are faithful and that's who you are. And it never changes. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That song, you can play it from morning till evening. You can ask my husband. There are days I play it nah, stop all day, all night on repeat to just say thank you, Lord. And I just want us to start, I wanted us to start up with Thanksgiving today. Welcome again to another session of Faith Boosters. We continue to go strong. Yeah, I know. I know. Congratulations are in order. <laughs> We welcome the baby into the world and yet we continue to bring you the word of god in this season thank you so much for being here invite our friends our family when you look on the live on the live chat who have you invited who have you also brought even as we come this this evening or morning whatever time it is wherever you're watching from can you share this with someone sometimes all you need to do is share we hear crazy testimonies of what God has done because his word is power. It's not because of us. It's because of his word that we share that the testimonies are coming through. Today, I want us to get into something that has been so close to my heart. Lately, I feel like I'm so full. Like there's so much I want to share. When I come, I'm literally debating with the Holy Spirit. What would you like me to share? Because there is so much God wants to give to us. And I believe that it's not, it's not me. It's God. It's the Father. He is sort of giving me a bit of his heart as a teacher of the word that he wants to pour into us there's so much so don't be shocked this year if we start broadcasting twice instead of once <laughs> instead of once a week or we start just broadcasting non-stop because there's so much that god has placed on my heart and i really believe that um that he wants <sighs> you see the word of god is a gift and i've been learning a lot about that it's not what we're going to talk about today but soon we'll be talking about the power of the word of god uh it's one of the things i'm desperate to enter more revelation on but also to teach more on because i think that we don't understand the power of the word of god and so it's something that i'm desperate to teach on but to know that when god has loved you he sends you a word when god wants to deliver you he sends you a word when god wants to promote you he sends you a word 
When God wants to elevate you, he sends you a word. Every time God wants to move you to the next level, he sends you a word. But then the, sometimes we, because we've not learned how to value the preciousness of the word of God, we think we want something more. We think maybe I need a, a connection or I need um, a more education or I need, I don't know. I've been in that place where I feel like, ah, yeah, 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 I know the word. Now give me something deeper, you know, or something more exciting. But I want to say to you, even though we are not teaching that today, and we will teach it very, very soon, um, that when God has loved you, the most precious thing you can receive is a word from him. A word from him. When he says we, that he's given us exceedingly great and precious promises. I think Paul was trying to find, Peter was trying to find the words, like, what words can I use to describe to you the power and preciousness and importance of the word of God? And he talks about how God has given us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these promises we may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, when God wants to, 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 to make us partakers or participants in the divine, the unnatural nature, the supernormal, he, give, he gives us promises. He gives us his word. So every time you sit here with me or with another teacher of the word, or even just with your Bible between you and the Holy Spirit, you're sitting with something so precious that has the capacity to absolutely turn your life around. Okay? And so today I bring you a word that is so close to my heart that I think has been brewing in there for a while, maybe for years even. Something that I believe has the, like every word of God, but has the capacity to completely change your life. And I want us to date, we're talking, when we're still on back to basics. I don't know how much, how long we're going to be doing basics. Maybe for months, I don't know. But I feel like God wants us to go back to foundational things in this season of our lives. That before we try to run into the, the higher things of God, we must build the foundational things. Because the foundations determine the height. The deeper you go in the foundations, the higher you can go. Um, uh, in terms of building on top of that. And I think that as a generation, we are impatient. We want to build, but we're not interested in the unseen stuff, the foundational stuff. And when the more you interact with, with, you know, teachings on these great men of God in the scriptures, in our generations after the scriptures, these are men who just stuck with foundational stuff. Things about the love of God, the word of God, speaking it, hearing it, faith, um, the fatherhood of God, prayer, basic stuff that turned them into absolute spiritual giants and so we want their fruit but we we feel like it's not glamorous what they seemed to hold on to but right now what do i want us to talk about today i want us to talk about the fatherhood of god embracing the father fully embracing the fatherhood of god and that might sound simplistic but i feel like this is something we are probably going to learn for the rest of our lives if you're like me now i come from uganda east africa africa and I've now believed that this is no longer just the African story. I think that this story has now become the global story. The story among African children, especially those people born in the 80s and 70s, is that there was great orphanhood because the HIV pandemic came and took so many fathers. In other countries, there were wars that took fathers away. But some of us, it's not been war, it's not been HIV. It's just been absent fathers. So many people have been raised by mothers or grandmothers. It's no longer, or you have a present but absent father, or maybe he's an alcoholic. If you meet a group of 20 to 30 young people and you ask them about their story growing up, you're going to find that either all of them or 99% of them grew up without a father who was present. They don't understand the concept of fatherhood. They, they grew up in, in Africa, you move from home to home. You, you're raised by an aunt and then an uncle and then a grandmother and then, you know, you're moving around and it's great because at least you have help and support. But then we understand mothers, we understand, you know, re but fatherhood is one of those things that's vague. I, I'm, and, and I'm one of those people. I grew up in homes where there were father figures, but I'll tell you the truth that it's not because they were bad people, but I don't really have the concept of a father, genuinely. I have ideas of what it feels like. I find myself fascinated by the few people who have been raised in stable homes with present fathers because most of those fathers were either out there hunting for food for their families or they were um, sick or drunk or 
abusive or separated and so there were stories around that genuinely i'm telling you that's the, you just pick a group of 10 friends and ask them about their stories growing up no more people don't look for the extra ordinary who probably had a father those are few few and it's painful but you see this thing is not new <laughs> it's not new i think this is what i'm convinced about now as a spiritual person and i think even you too as a spiritual person that this thing is not a coincidence from time immemorial there's been an attack on fathers and i think i want you to stick with me that's why god first of all calls himself our heavenly father and he says, I'm the God of your fathers. Okay? Now, of course, if you have, if you're someone who is all about supporting women, sometimes you can find yourself, if you're not spiritual, even now just getting offended. Again, that's, I believe, is a plot of the enemy. I believe in empowering women. I'm a woman. But I think that that movement also, a part of it went off and now became angry against all male species and all fathers and it became an attack on fathers. Here is why I think that this is a very calculated attack from the pit of hell against fathers, whether they were absent growing up or abusive. Nowadays, you find children were abused by fathers or uncles or father figures, and it's a distortion of the fatherhood of God. That's my belief. I really believe that the enemy who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy has come up with a very clever plan, and the plan has become to turn the entire world into a big orphanage where all of us are orphans even those of us who, who have biological fathers alive we are we live as orphans we don't understand the concept of inheritance it's far from us i don't know how many people you know who have an inheritance including you who is watching do you have an inheritance do you even, I, what is even an inheritance in fact for some of us much as we are working to one day give an inheritance to our children there's a part of us that feels that they should suffer for it because if they get it with ease which then kills the concept of inheritance anyway of, if you have to suffer to get it i don't know if it's an inheritance but we feel like we are spoiling them by giving them an inheritance we feel like there's got to be a certain degree of suffering attached or working to get something that if you get anything that you didn't work for it's wrong and yet God comes to us and gives us the gift of salvation. So how are you supposed to receive the gift of salvation, which is not just forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins is that door. It's what removes the barrier and gives us access to the full package of salvation, which we struggle to receive, which is our inheritance in Christ Jesus, which we struggle to receive and even identify with and even conceptualize because it has to begin with being born again into a family. That's why he calls it being born again, not being I don't know elevated again or restored again why do you think god uses that language being born again we are born into families he calls himself a father are you seeing the picture and the one thing that is distorted is our concept of family our concept of fatherhood and somehow we are supposed to receive the things of god the father but without understanding what it takes what a father is and being having a distorted image of fathers and so we, we go to God and we struggle for most of our spiritual work because we are trying to receive a thing we cannot understand. And I'm saying we because I'm part of you. I am on a journey of understanding, receiving, embracing the fatherhood of God. And I believe that it's revolutionary and it is foundational. I don't think this is something you learn after, I don't know, going deeper with God. I think that unless we, but the people who have discovered the fatherhood of God are the ones truly reigning in life. Because then you see fatherhood, listen to me, why do I think that the enemy is after the fatherhood of God and is trying to make us orphans? It's what I think. He's after our inheritance. He's after our inheritance. You see, inheritance is not worked for. Inheritance is received by reason of bloodline. I am born into that home I'm born into that family, therefore, I have an inheritance. It's not by reason of good behavior. It's not by reason of merit. It's not by reason of all the things that we bring to God, our accolades. And that's what we struggle with most of our spiritual work and identity and being in the kingdom of God, is we are trying to bring our hard work into a place of inheritance. What only sonship can give you, you're trying to gain through hard work and good behavior. And yet that doesn't work for God. 
So you start to look at scripture. Okay? In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12, that's another one you should memorize. I forgot to ask you at the beginning. What are you memorizing? What are you meditating on? John 1, 12 says, this is, this is the, the, John the Apostle. He says, as, but as many as received him, this is Jesus Christ, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. As many as received him. Many of you watching me, you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The day you received him as your Lord and Savior, he gave you a gift. The gift was a right, a privilege to become a child of God. To become a child of God, not by anything you had done. The only thing you did is receive. Can you imagine? Your work is to receive. You guys, our work, our greatest work of faith is receiving. If there's something I've had the Holy Spirit say to me over the past maybe 10 years, it's become a good receiver. Become a good receiver. Many of us, we are poor receivers. How do you feel when someone gives you something free? There's a way I feel that tells me that there's, there's a nature I still have, an orphanhood. Because people who are good receivers are people who grew up in places where they were secure with their fathers, especially. I'm a mother. Mothers, we are important. But let me tell you, there's something about fathers, whether we want it or not. That's why God calls himself a father. Fathers, you see fathers offer protection. Fathers give you an identity. Did you know that? That's why we call, at least in Africa, you take on the tribe of your father. You may speak your mother language, you might, but at the end of that day, you take on the tribe of your father, the name of your father, the identity of your father. So imagine growing up without even knowing who your father is. I mean, I knew who my father was, but I grew up on my maternal side of the family. And I'll tell you what, much as these people were amazing people and they shaped my life, I grew up feeling quite empty and lost. I felt like, I don't know who I am. What am I? Where do I truly come from? And that can feel like ingratitude from those who are raising you. But it's, it's just that that's how God made us. He made us to receive. The fathers are the source of life. Do you know that? That without a seed of the father, the sperm, you cannot actually have a child. You, the womb can be there and it's fertile, but you need the seed from a father to create the life of a child. So fathers are sources, and that's why the enemy attacks fathers, makes us hate fathers, makes us hate the concept of manhood. Because once he has attacked them in the natural, he has finished us spiritually. Once we meet God the Father, we can't relate with him. We can't under, we read the scriptures and everything is foreign to us. Even the thing I've just read, a right to become a son, a child of God. Like, do we don't even know how to be children. We know how to be hard workers, what, you know how to achieve. We don't know how to be children. I can tell you, just be a child. What do you mean? In our minds, being a child is being irresponsible. We don't know how to relax, receive, be taken care of. Yeah, you're in my home, I told you. You can't even hear the bell ringing. So, we don't understand the concept of being a child and just receiving the love of the Father. And yet, guess what? God is a giver. It's more blessed. He's the most blessed. He, it's more blessed to give than to receive. No one can outgive God, meaning that he's the biggest giver you'll ever find. God is the biggest giver. Now, what should you become when you meet the biggest giver? You become the biggest receiver. <laughs> but how will you be the biggest receiver when you can't even trust the biggest giver or you don't even think he's interested in giving to you? So here we are with the most blessed one, the largest giver of all, who is our father. He's not our friend. He's not our uncle. He's not giving us a little bit of something. He doesn't have favorites. We are by nature, but because we received him, we became heirs. Because the next verse says, listen, the point of you becoming a child of God is not to become a child. The point of God being your father is not that you have a father. No. The next verse 13, John 1, 13 says, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We are born of God. 
Why? Why is God belaboring the point that we are born of God? Why is John saying this is critical? In the first chapter of his book, he's laboring to tell us, guys, that day you receive Jesus Christ, you got a right to be a child of God. You're no longer attached to the lineage. Oh, Kelebo Zita Rabashete. You're not attached to the lineage of your natural father and, 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 and lineage anymore. Maybe you don't know who your father was. Or maybe your mother was raped to have you. Or maybe I don't know what the concept is. Whatever it was that happened when it happened. You're no longer attached to that thing. Whether there's privilege there or no privilege. What I'm starting to realize is that the fatherhood of God is level ground for all of us. That suddenly, if we are all children of God, we all have an inheritance that cannot be touched. We all have an in a heritage of divine health, divine wealth, favor, promotion, increase that is unstoppable. We go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. All these things are available to us. Joy, peace, every good thing in Christ Jesus. But you see, you must believe first of all that you are a child of God to be able to access what belongs to you. Because it's possible to have a great father and live as an orphan for the rest of your life. It's possible. For some of us, it has happened. We don't know who our father is and it's probably some wealthy man somewhere. But we've lived as paupers all our lives, scratching the surface, while having a father who has everything we could ever need. Now, I, I don't want us to live like that anymore. Because you see, it doesn't matter what happens in the natural, in the spirit, the point of you receiving the fatherhood of God on the day of salvation was that you're now connected to a spiritual womb shake a label you're now connected to a spiritual womb where you can tap into the much more of god regardless of your tribe your skin color where you were born it doesn't matter god is able look the same god who found joseph in a prison and promoted him and everything he did was blessed it didn't matter where joseph was once he he was connected to a certain spiritual womb he was blessed Jacob went, he was cheated 10 times by his master, but he was blessed. And his master got blessed on account of Jacob. Imagine having a house, a boy who works in your compound, maybe slashes, but on account of him and what he carries in his, in his lineage, you're blessed, you the boss who pays him. You start begging him to stay, that's what you carry. That's what you carry by reason of inheritance, not by reason of hard work, not by reason of prayer and fasting, not by reason of discipline, by reason of simply inheritance. Do you believe it? The fatherhood of God must be embraced in our generation. Why? We've been too often to understand fatherhood. So we must get into this, this word here. Dig in and start to understand who am I because of purely heritage. You must start to open your mouth and decree how you are a son of God, a daughter of the living God. You cannot be disadvantaged. You are the head and not the tail. Not because of anything you've done. Not because you read your Bible so well yesterday, but because you're attached to the heavenly father, the source of life itself. He says that he owns everything. That he's the source of all life. That he owes oh, and that's who you're attached to. That's your father. That is your father who loves you unconditionally, who does not condemn. He gives every, James says, every good and perfect gift. He says, do not be deceived, brethren. You can be deceived. Every good and perfect gift comes from God, the father of lights. We are lights. Yes, we are spirits. We are lights. Yes, he says, you are the light of the world in, in, in Matthew 5, 16. He, he, 14. He says, you're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden from 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 sight and he says that every good and perfect gift comes from god the father of lights in whom there is no shadow of turning god gives good gifts your father look if you've met someone who has a good father you know how amazing they are their fathers don't condemn their fathers are givers those are the people who go to restaurants without money and call their dad to pay the bill some of you are like huh <laughs> uh -uh. you imagine you're even laughing the thought of calling your father to pay your bill at a restaurant which he did send you to like you can't imagine it now that's how you feel about god you go to god with that mentality of hmm. Who am I even asking for anything? You feel like you have to be so organized before God. Bring your CV, present to him your PowerPoint presentation, and then based on your good behavior, he might perhaps hand you something. You have no concept of freely receiving the extravagances of God. And yet he says those who receive abundance of grace in Romans 5.17, and of the gift of righteousness, those are the ones who reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. 
Friends, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. The fatherhood of God must be embraced. To those who received him, he gave the right to be sons, children of God. That day, the right to be a child of God became yours truly and fundamentally because you received Jesus Christ. You became a son and a daughter. And you're born not just of the will of man. Maybe your parents didn't want you. It's okay. You, with the day you got born again, you are now born into one who wanted you. The one who before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you all together. Before you became an idea to your parents, he, he fashioned you, put you in your mother's womb, sent you as an answer in your generation. But if you don't connect with that truth, you can live for the rest of your life thinking you're a mistake when you have a father who has a plan for you. Who has ordained you as something in your generation and we'll be talking about that concept next week the truth and the foundational truth that you're not random you're here on assignment by your heavenly father to accomplish something in your generation and no one can help you to believe that truth but also if you don't connect to that truth you cannot leave out your purpose in your generation you must accept the fatherhood of god we must accept the fatherhood of god that he is our father by right of the blood of jesus christ you are born. Why is it important to be born of the will of God? Because then Romans 8, let's go there. Romans 8, uh, whew, what a good word. Romans 8, let's start from verse 15. Listen, he says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Meaning there is a spirit at work in this world. And that's a spirit of bondage. And it has its identity is fear. I lived in fear for so many years, especially towards father figures. I always felt like I'll never please. I'll never be good enough. That's the orphan spirit. It works in you a certain fear eh? that is so bad that you, it, 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 it presents itself in either you want to be so perfect before those that you see as father figures or you enter rebellion where you don't care. You're trying to prove something or you just become completely broken. There are extremes. So for me, I lived in fear. Fear of failing, fear of being disowned, fear of being unliked, fear of not being good enough. And so everything I did was never enough. Okay? And this spirit of bondage is the spirit of orphanhood. That's why he says in, verse, in this verse 15, Romans 8, 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, oh, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. Some of you cannot dare say the word Daddy. It's a very foreign word. To go to God and call him Daddy, Papa. <laughs> you, you even say it and you're like, try, try. Some of you now need to try it in the broadcast. You say it and you're like, <laughs> it's so wrong. I feel like I'm just saying a bad word, you know, because it's so foreign to us. But you need to train your tongue to start calling God, Papa, Daddy, Baba. I don't know what it is in your language, but to start saying you are my father. You're not just my God. The only time we see Jesus calling God, my God, my God, when God appears, listen, two things have come to my spirit right now. When God, the father appears, before Jesus begins his powerful ministry in the world, what does he say? He says, does he say this is my beloved, this is my strong worker or my performing servant, my anointed one. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When he appears at a transfiguration also, he says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. That shows you that the most powerful, listen, the most powerful position you can occupy in God is as a beloved son. Not as a son, beloved son. One who is truly loved by God. Because everything flows from there. All faith. Did you know that faith is built on the foundation of love? That those who believe they are loved believe that they've received everything from God. When they open the Bible, they are seeing inheritance this you think is also mine ha ah, houses i've never built lands i've never fought do you can you believe that's what they are seeing and those people annoy you you think they are being unrealistic no they've understood that they are sons and daughters and and that's who i want to become that's who you and i must become that we must receive abundance of grace and merited favor and of the gift of right do you hear those words gift abundance grace those are the people who reign in life who live as kings in this life 
Those are the ones. We are the ones. Say, I am the one. Yes, you are the one. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of the Most High God. That, that's the first thing that came to me was that when Jesus was right there, his first, the first time we hear God affirming Jesus, he says, beloved son. That's what God wants you to, to take that position. The highest position in God is that of a beloved son or a beloved daughter. That's the, that's the most significant position. But you know what? He says we receive the spirit of adoption by whom, I know I said I, two things came to my heart. I can't remember the second one. Eh? That it will come back to me. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Listen. <laughs> now he tells you why it's important to be called having a right to be a child of God. He says if children, then heirs. Come on, you must be a child to be an heir. I said you must be a child to be an heir. You must be born in the family to be an heir. Yes, you must have a father to be an heir. That's why God calls himself my father, your father, our heavenly father. That's why when Jesus is going to teach his disciples to pray there and say, you shall say, Lord Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. That is great. But he says you come to him as sons go to fathers. He says, you say, my father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, which is also my kingdom, our kingdom, let it come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, give us this. You see, when the son is asking the father for daily bread, they are not begging. They are informing. Like for me, when our kids are talking to their dad here, I watch them because I'm curious about how it feels to have a father. My children have a loving father. When they, I have a, 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 we have a little one. Who keeps telling she wakes up in the morning and says there's a restaurant in uganda called uh cafe javas it's a bit popular she likes it daddy would you take me to cafe javas for breakfast and for her in her world he's always available he always has money now i have a friend who has a loving father this girl can go to a restaurant a high-end restaurant eat the food she wants and send a message daddy please pay for my breakfast i just spent money i don't have and he'll send the money i told her uh uh don't understand but i'm going to understand <laughs> now me i've done my stuff with my heavenly father i've gone to saloons done my nails with no money and sat there and said daddy you gotta pay the bill thank god he's a good father because he has come through each time i walked into i've done crazy stuff now don't do this stuff when you don't have a revelation that you're testing god no you're not testing god it's when something has happened in your spirit i've walked into a restaurant and bought food without money and someone has walked in and said oh Pastor B3, I have to bless you today. You can't pay your bill. You can't pay your... And then I act like, hey, okay, okay, you pay. They don't know that. Uh, I actually... Yes, I've done these things. I've, test, I've t tried this stuff to say, so if it works with a natural father, what about the heavenly one? And it works. It works. He says, and if children, then heirs. If children, then heirs. If children, then heirs. Let that sink in your spirit. If children, then heirs. You must first become a child to be an heir. Many of us want the inheritance without being sons and daughters. We want to be workers without inheritance. Workers get a wage, honey. They don't get an inheritance. Workers get a wage. That's what happened with the, the son in Luke 15, the one who stayed home and saw himself as a worker and told his father, you've not given me a small goat. And he said, everything is yours. That's how some of us are. We are working for God, waiting for him to give us something. And he's saying, take your inheritance. Take your inheritance. Take it. You have to take it. The inheritance is yours. Understand it. See it in, your, in the scriptures. That's where the inheritance is. That's why I said by telling you that the most powerful thing in the world that God has given us is the word of God. That's our heritage. It's, it's like the will of our father is written down for us as sons and daughters to know and take the enemy wants you deceived, first of all, that you are not a son or daughter of God. Make you a worker so that you work for what is yours. That's what he did to Adam and Eve. He came and said, did God really say? They already had the identity of God. Then he said, if you eat this thing, you will get what you already have. That's what the enemy comes to tell you. He makes you doubt the goodness of God towards you and start to take counterfeit stuff, substandard stuff, fall fall for the things that are not for sons and daughters because he makes you think god is not for you if son if children then heirs heirs of god joint heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified with him listen to me 
if children then heirs. It's an inheritance thing. It's an inheritance question. The issue with fatherhood is inheritance. The enemy knows that if we see ourselves as sons and daughters, he's in trouble. Let me tell you something. It's time to go back to the father and say, Father, I don't even understand the concept of fatherhood, but you will teach me. I don't know how to be a son or a daughter, but you're going to teach me. But to start by knowing that to be a son and a daughter is, is just something that's given. The baby that we've given birth to, did not, we've not given birth to them because they were so good. No, because they are born to us, they are now ours. And their privileges they are going to enjoy that no one else can by reason of being born in our family. By reason of being born in the family of God. Suddenly, there are privileges you have. Divine health, divine wealth, joy, prosperity, favor with men and with God. You know, uh, acceleration, access to the Father, peace with God. I don't know, guys, what more do we have access to by reason of being sons and daughters of the living God? You don't need another connection. You don't need another see something on your cv you have the biggest connection of all let me tell you the moment you connect with the truth that you're a child of god you will start to see stuff align not because it didn't align before but because you've aligned with who you are your identity you now know who you are you walk in a certain space of faith because faith receives what god has given by grace but if you don't believe it you don't have the receiver the, the magnet can't work like it can't the language doesn't work the stuff is there but the pin number doesn't work the pin number is your identity as a son and a daughter i'll end with this in the book of psalm 68 verse 5 and 6 it says a father of the fatherless that's god a defender of widows is god in his holy habitation god sits a solitary in families. Maybe you feel very alone. You know, maybe you feel like you're that fatherless person. Maybe for you it's actually real, like you just lost a father. You're never an orphan. I remember the day the Holy Spirit said to me, years ago I was a teenager. You're not an orphan. You have a heavenly father. You're more privileged than people who have natural parents because your father takes care of everything in your life. Listen to me. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. You know what it means to set something? You make it permanently stand. It becomes immovable. Through the fatherhood of God, he has set you in a family. The most privileged family you can ever belong to is the family of God. And you don't have to work for it. You don't have to... Work your way to please God and look at him and wonder, will he ever be pleased with me? Yes, he's pleased with you because of Jesus Christ. The enemy is after your inheritance. He wants you to work for what already belongs to you. He wants you to doubt that you are in a privileged position with God. But remember, the most privileged position you can ever have is that privilege of being a son and a daughter of God. Fathers protect. Fathers give inheritance. Fathers give identity. Fathers give a sense of confidence in the world. And that's what God wants to give you on this journey on earth. Whether your natural father was present or absent, there is a higher father. There is a higher place. You can approach that one. You don't need to have any skin color, any birthright naturally. You have a birthright with God to inherit what he has given you. And so I want to say to you is this. You are a beloved son or daughter. God gave you the right to be a child and therefore an heir. God wants you to, to get your inheritance from him. How? Receive the fatherhood of God. Because if children, then we are heirs. If children, then heirs. So right now, in this moment, I want to invite you, who has never had the right to be a son of God, a child of God. You know what? Right now is the moment for you to say yes to Jesus. There's a beautiful song. I remember it, right? It's about how I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You know that song? It, it, it's, it's what is in my mind right now. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because for, listen, where there is no confidence of sonship, there is fear. 
where there is no confidence of sonship, there is fear. And today, God wants you to remember that you're a child of God. You don't need to be afraid of God, you know, coming and embarrassing you. Or God making you get found out. Yes. That song that's playing, you hear it? God wants you to remember you're a, you're a son, you're a daughter. He covers you. You're not just a son or daughter, you're a beloved son and daughter. You have an inheritance that cannot be corrupted, that's not dependent on you. It's dependent on Jesus Christ and what he did and on the fatherhood of God. You're not a slave to fear anymore. Can you sing that with me? I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Today we break every bondage of fear, every bondage of orphanhood, every spirit of fear and orphanhood. We curse you, we cut you off of every child of God under the sound of my voice who is hearing this message or listening to this song right now. I speak freedom over you, my sister, my brother, the freedom to receive the love of the Father as it is in its fullness. Even right now, you who has never received the fatherhood of God, I, 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 right now I'd like to just invite you into that to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and enter into the family of the living God. You don't have to live wondering who you are, having no sense of confidence in the world. Right now, I don't consider myself to be a Munyankore or a Muchiga or a a Ugandan. My greatest privilege is that I'm a daughter of the Most High God. My tribe is the tribe of heaven, the tribe of the Lion of Judah. Maybe you don't know who your father was in the natural. You know who your heavenly father is, where you truly came from. So why don't you go ahead right now and just start to decree, I am not an orphan. I am not hopeless. I am not without help in the world. I have a father. I have a privileged position. I am not disadvantaged. I am advantaged. I am loved. I am faithful. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I am going to learn how to receive the fatherhood of God. It's not a one-time thing. You have to affirm those things. Acknowledge every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I see chains falling today in the name of Jesus. I see relationships being restored. Some of you, you've tried to turn people into fathers. You're obsessed with trying to make people like you. You don't need that. You're loved by the Father, first of all. And you'll become a channel of love, not one who sucks and takes away father we thank you for your love i could stand and say i am a child of god you split the sea so i could walk right through it my fears are drowned in perfect love oh you're asking me so I can stand and say, I am a child. Amen. You're a child of God. I am a child of God. And I have a word, even as we come to the end, for someone watching right now. You know the children of Israel, God took them out of bondage physically in their bodies. But they failed, that entire generation failed to make it to the promised land because they remained orphans and slaves in their minds. And someone, yes, you've known Jesus as Lord and Savior, but you're still walking in so much bondage in your life because in your mind, you're still an orphan. You're still separate from the life of God. And so today, would you receive the fatherhood of God? Not even to be born again. You're already born again. You already left the slavery of sin, but you're still a slave in your mind. You're still outside of the privileges of God. You're still not favored. You still need to do more for God to love you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God has loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting, it can't be broken. And he wants you to enter your inheritance. Enter your inheritance today, child of God. You're loved, you're highly favored. It's been a blessing sharing this word with you. This is a powerful word. You can listen to it again and again as you pray in the spirit. You can send it to family and friends. It's time for us to end this story of orphanhood and enter into the true fatherhood of God. And he sings over you today. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am already well pleased. Now take your inheritance and receive the much more of God. I'll see you again next week with another powerful word from our father who loves us. Till then, stay in the love of the Father. Remember, your most privileged position is that of a beloved son and a beloved daughter. Bye. Love you.